Yo, what is up guys, Jack Gardner here, and today I wanna to talk about some guitar goals for 2023. Now, these are actually kind of a bit of a reminder for myself. As the year goes on, I'll probably take a look back at this and check, am I actually doing the things which I'm preaching here? But I thought these kind of goals could apply to every one of you out there. And maybe you'll get an idea or something that you can write down and work towards during the year. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, my first goal is to practice efficiently, sensibly, and consistently, not obsessively. Now you might be thinking, what is this? Well, essentially, I have never been one of these guitar players that can organize a practice plan into like 10 minute chunks, say. Lots of guys will do these kind of plans whereby they work on legato for 10 minutes, then say harmony for another 10 minutes, chordal playing for another 10 minutes, and fit these into maybe one hour chunks, two hour chunks. That has never worked for me. I've always been the type of player whereby if I get obsessed with, say, one technique, say legato, I can work on that for eight hours at the detriment of everything else. Work-life balance can go out the window and all I am doing is I'm hyper-focused on that one thing for potentially weeks at a time. This year, with the amount of work that we've got on, tours, clinics, all, all kinds of stuff, I'm thinking that maybe I should practice more sensibly. Now, I'm not probably gonna do these 10 minute chunks. What I'm gonna do myself is give myself a goal every week or a topic, say, diminished scale, for example. And I'm gonna try and work on that for minimum 30 minutes per day if I've got practice time during that day. And just see where I am at the end of the week. Recording yourself or taking videos is gonna be an excellent way of judging are you really achieving those targets that you've set yourself, whether that be with technique, harmony, etc., etc. Whatever the goal is, you're wanting to see some kind of evidence, and I believe recording yourself is absolutely key to that. Now remember that with practice, it's not like what you see on social media. When you practice, you are supposed to sound like you suck essentially. <laughs> you are not practicing if you sound amazing at something straight away. There's, I think it's the drummer Ash Sohn maybe, who said the famous words, embrace the suck, and I totally agree with that. I think social media kind of blurs these lines of what practicing actually is. Practicing is essentially working on something that you are terrible at. You should be making mistakes and you should be struggling with, say, visualization of these things or getting the mechanics of the technique down. But I would totally agree with this idea of embracing the fact that it won't sound good at first. The whole idea is that we work on these to make them sound better. <laughs> Okay, so goal number two for me is going to be fretboard visualization. Now, fretboard visualization is a never ending journey and it should be something that you are working on regardless of whether you consider yourself a beginner, intermediate or more of an advanced or pro player. Remember, guitar is not like, say, a piano where the note names are definite. We have multiple ways to approach notes on the fretboard and different places to access and play them. Now, depending on which type of visualization you use, whether that's cage system, three note per string, or the intervals way like myself, you should constantly be working on places where you think there are flaws, whether that be scale types, you know, arpeggios, triads, chords, whatever it is, you should definitely include this in your practice plans. If you are into the interval way of visualizing the fretboard, then I can highly recommend the app Solo by my old teacher Tom Quayle and David Beebe. It's an amazing piece of kit. Or if you are looking for a course, then I have a fretboard visualization course which is available at Music Bro to Stream if you are a member. Or if you just want to purchase it and download the files, then that is totally cool too. That's available at my website and at Music Pro. 
But for me personally, one of the things which I'm going to be working on with my visualization this year are some scale types which I barely ever use, but when they crop up, I always tend to have a brain fart. So things like harmonic minor scale and its modes, some of the melodic minor scale modes as well, and also maybe harmonic major. That's something that I want to dive into this year. These are just some examples of things that you can put into your practice plan and hopefully work on in 2023. Let's move on to the next goal. Okay, goal number three then is going to be transcription. Now, transcription is probably the thing which I go on about the most when it comes to my lessons and private students. It's just the key to getting better. I think music is a language. And in order to speak that language, you constantly have to learn. Think about it, a good example of this is say, maybe you've never ever read or studied how to speak Spanish. But if you surround yourself with Spanish people for a month, you are gonna find a way to communicate because you'll constantly be listening and trying to replicate what the others are doing. That certainly happened for me. I can only speak a little bit, but it taught me essentially that I need to speak these words in order to communicate with other people. The transcription works the same way. If you want to speak the language and you want to sound like the, the players which you look up to, then you need to copy. Now, transcription doesn't necessarily mean taking a whole song and writing it all down with notation or in Guitar Pro or something like that. Transcription, for me, is just taking one line, say, from a favorite player of mine, exploring what they are doing in terms of the harmony, what they are doing in terms of technique, and then seeing if there are any ideas that that can sprout from my own playing. I'll often find that when I'm transcribing one of my favorite players, that one little fragment of one little lick can often create tons of new ideas. That little line at the beginning there, which you heard before this goal, was actually something that I transcribed from Frank Gambale. And I just think it's a really cool sound. It's something that I want to explore and put into my vocabulary, whether that's with my improvisation or whether that's when it comes to writing music. But I think it's a good idea to be doing this pretty much all the time. If you can transcribe one lick a day, think that is 30 licks in a month, say on average per year you're going to get 365 licks which is a ton it can take sometimes an hour to transcribe a lick sometimes it can take a whole day if it's something particularly difficult but i think it's just a great way of getting your ears working also getting your fretboard visualization in order and technique so Remember, music as a language, transcription, I think is arguably the most important thing if we want to improve as a guitar player. Goal number four is gonna be to write your own music. And if you can, try and write for just 10 minutes a day. This is a tip that was given to me by Owain. Now, he said that writing for 30 minutes a day just improves all of the mechanics of it. You get quicker at writing drums, score and bass, things like that program and MIDI. And you can also get better with your production skills doing it this way. Now, if you are interested in writing music and getting better at that side of things, then do check out our website, musicbro.co.uk. It's a learning platform where we cover guitar and the production and songwriting elements. Now, that brings me on to the next goal very quickly, and that is getting into music production. As times are moving on and the music industry is very much changing into the kind of social media era, then we need to be good at producing our own music and our own videos. That means good recording quality, good video quality as well, as a side note, but mainly the sound of our tracks or productions, whatever it is that you are doing, whether that's backing tracks or, you know, original music. So I think production skills are a key element 
if you want to be a modern musician in 2023. If you are interested in learning that, like I mentioned, Music Bro has some courses on this already and there are tons planned for the future. I'm definitely going to be studying Owain's side of things because production for me is something I've always felt I am rubbish at. So, Definitely, if you want to be a better modern musician in 2023, then try to up your production skills. So the next guitar goal is going to be working on new techniques. So for me in particular, one technique which I started to look at last year was this selective picking made famous by the likes of Toast Nabassi. And it's something that has just inspired me. I'm still getting used to the mechanics of it, but I find that it's given me new ideas and creative ways of looking at the guitar, both in terms of improvisation and songwriting skills. So my advice for any of you out there is to pick one technique which you are not so familiar with. That could be legato, hybrid picking, economy picking, whatever it is, and just sit down and maybe once per week work on some of the mechanics of that technique. Take a look at licks, lines, or solos that use this technique, analyze it, and see if you can absorb it into your own playing. I often find, like I mentioned, that it can inspire songwriting in some ways. If you can try and write, say, a 20 second demo using one of these techniques, it can open up the floodgates and you might get totally different ideas in terms of harmony, in terms of, you know, structure of songs than you would if, say, you didn't use said technique. So definitely check out technique this year in 2023. Just pick one, just one. <laughs> Final goal then is gonna be to actually listen to music, not just videos on social media. Now I know this might sound crazy, especially in the modern era, but I've found myself guilty of this, and I'm sure many of you out there have definitely fallen into this trap, where the only music that you tend to be consuming is via video format, and they tend to be one minute clips on things like Instagram, TikTok, etc. For me, a massive part of what I did in 2022 was to focus on listening to full albums or at least full songs. I think we can't let this die out. We can't let our attention spans die either. I mean, you think if you're so used to this one minute thing, very often you end up flicking to the next video. I've told myself that a kind of rule is when I start a song, unless it's absolutely awful and I cannot stand it, I want to jump out the window, then I will listen from start to finish. And I will often choose a new album every week or maybe even a new style. This could be like a side goal, but listening to styles of music or types of music that you are not necessarily familiar with is always inspiring. It could be anything from, you know, I don't know, reggaeton to hardcore bop to, you know, I don't know, Indian classical music. Just try one new style every week. Might not be to your taste, but it's just expanding your palate for listening. And I always find that to be really inspiring. Keeps your ears fresh at the end of the day. So guys, that's it for the goals for 2023. Let me know what your goals are. Do you have anything to add to this? Or is there anything you can relate to with some of the things I've said here? I'd love to know your thoughts. As always, if you are interested in lessons or more in-depth kind of discussions over these things, then check out musicbro.co.uk and also my lessons over at my website. My name is Jack Gardner, wishing you all the best this year. Can't wait to see what you guys get up to. Till next time, cheers. <laughs>